Hi, I'm Paris, and I confess to being a bit of a hypochondriac. If I read there's an illness going around that can cause shortness of breath, invariably I'll start wondering, am I having shortness of breath? And I'll be online looking up what are the other symptoms? Well, let's see, you would have a fever. Well, fever, I can check. I have a thermometer and uh, let's see, coughing. Well, I know whether I'm coughing or not, but wouldn't it be nice if there were a device that would let me know how well my body is actually getting oxygen out to all my parts? With that data, I can be reasonably certain whether I should be concerned about my health or whether my mind is taking me down the rabbit hole of hypochondria. Now, whether that's your situation or you're just concerned for the future because you've seen these news reports that with the illness going around now, that some people get sicker than they realize, they don't feel like they have the shortness of breath, but their blood oxygen level really has dropped to a dangerously low level and they should be getting themselves to a hospital. So you don't want that situation to happen to you either. In both those cases, a pulse oximeter is what you want. This is an as seen on TV pulse oximeter that I reviewed about five years ago. So easy to use. Open the little clippy thing up, stick your finger in it, push the button, wait a little bit. It tells you both your heart rate and your blood oxygen level. Let's see how I'm doing. 99% blood oxygen, that's good. I've never gotten 100, I don't think you can. My pulse is currently 76. I got this model of pulse oximeter for about $30. I don't think they make this exact model anymore. And I don't know if you can find a pulse oximeter for $30 anymore. You would think over five years they would have gotten cheaper. But there's quite a bit of demand right now, so you may have to spend $40 or $50 to get one. But I'll link to a page of similar devices on Amazon down below this video if you'd like to peruse what's available now. But if you don't want to spend money to buy another device, what if you have a fitness tracker? Does this have the ability to tell you what your blood oxygen level is? Some newer fitness trackers do. This is a Fitbit Versa. I think the last couple generations of Fitbit devices do have the sensor. Well, it's actually a combination of the light and the sensor built into it to check your blood oxygen levels. If you get a sleep report that includes a little graph that it shows whether you have sudden changes in your blood oxygen level during the night, which could indicate sleep apnea and you should get that checked out. If, it, if you get that graph when you look in the app, then your device does have the SPO2 sensor. But if you go looking in the app or on the fitness tracker itself saying, well, show me what's my blood oxygen level right now, they won't show you that. Why? Because the FDA has to approve a device for that purpose and they haven't received approval. The FDA is gonna to wanna to make sure that when this device is telling you your blood oxygen level that you can believe it, that it's going to be fairly accurate. So Fitbit doesn't wanna be responsible for the device maybe not measuring your blood oxygen accurately. So they use it in conjunction with other things when you're sleeping to give you an indication of whether you have sleep apnea, but there's nowhere you can pull up like, right now I wanna push a button and see my blood oxygen level. They aren't gonna let you do that. So here's the graph that Fitbit will show you about last night's sleep and your estimated oxygen variation. So it doesn't tell you if your oxygen is high or low, only if it jumps around between high or low. So I'm afraid you could go to sleep with low oxygen levels, wake up with low oxygen levels, and if they just stayed low all night, this wouldn't have the spikes that alert you. You might need to seek medical attention based on the variation in your oxygen level. There are devices that, that will let you see that information. I have one right here. I was sent this to review a few years ago. This is the H-Band watch, and they don't make this model anymore. Here's the back of my H-Band watch. That's the charging ports there. The sensors are here. Let me cycle through here and get to blood oxygen measurement. So you see we've got the green light. It's measuring the heart rate and the red light, which is measuring the blood oxygen. Well, it gave up because it wasn't on my wrist. But when your device is actively measuring those things, those lights will be on. This is the underside of my Fitbit Versa. So these are the lights and the sensors. And when it thinks I'm wearing it, you will see the green light. Green light is gonna measure my heart rate. And next to it is the sensor that picks up the returning light to measure your heart rate. Over here, I believe, is the red light and infrared light emitter and the sensor that picks that up when it's measuring your blood oxygen but I don't think it turns on unless it senses that you're asleep. Then again, it could be emitting infrared light right now and we wouldn't know it because we wouldn't be able to see it. Okay, I will cycle again through to get to blood oxygen measurement. There we go. Now I think it takes a little bit longer than the fingertip pulse oximeter. 
and it's not it's usually pretty accurate the numbers usually match up when I've compared them both but if the watch is a little bit loose what's it telling me there 99 okay if the watch is a little bit loose or if I'm out walking and sweaty it it can vary let's double check that it does match up now it will initially give me the previous reading from before but you know usually once the pulse starts changing then the blood oxygen level is up to date so what am I at there 77 and 99 Okay, now this particular model is unfortunately no longer for sale and I don't know really that it was ever FDA approved. There are fitness trackers you can buy, I think they're mostly from China, that will show you your current uh, blood oxygen level, but I don't know that they've been tested. I don't know if they're accurate. So I don't wanna recommend something that could misinform you, which might be worse than having no information at all. Now, the last thing are apps. You may have heard of this, that supposedly there are apps you can get for your phone. You put your finger over the, um, the flash and the camera lens, and it can tell you your blood oxygen level. That's unlikely. From what I've read, doctors who've studied it have said no, people are just trying to get you to download the app because you need to have specific sensors to pick up red light and infrared light and to filter out the other light waves so it can do the comparison to figure out your blood oxygen level. And regular camera lenses let in all visible wavelengths of light but they have a coating to block out infrared light. So I really think it's unlikely that one of those apps can work. So your best option if you really need to know your blood oxygen level is to spend $40 or so and buy a fingertip pulse oximeter. I know you might be thinking of 40 bucks and I may never use it. If you're at all inclined to go down the road to Hypochondriacville, this can save you a trip to the doctor's office or even to the ER where they tell you you're fine. Take two aspirin and stop calling me. Wear a mask, wash your hands, and here's to hoping you'll never even have to turn one of these on. And I'll see you on the next review.